How to use your Intermate to safely give your IV antibiotics. Welcome. My name is Daphne Broadhurst. I'm a clinical specialist with medical pharmacies and OMS. We're going to show you how to safely give yourself IV medicine through a bottle pump called the Intermate. After I've shown you how to do each of the steps, I'll stop and ask some questions to make sure I've explained this okay. This will help you to remember the key points to keep it safe. I know it can be scary to learn this, but hopefully after you've watched this video, you'll see that you indeed can do this. And don't forget that your home care nurse is just a phone call away if you need help. I'm here with Scott who is a high school teacher. I showed him how he would give himself antibiotics at home with the Intermate pump, and now he's going to do it. Of course, if your nurse showed you how to do something a little bit differently, please follow those instructions. This is the Intermate pump, which kind of looks like a baby bottle. In fact, that's what some patients affectionately refer to it as. It has one dose of medicine in it. So if you get your medicine once a day, there would only be the one dose. This will run for, depends on the bottle, maybe a half an hour, an hour, an hour and a half. They, they do vary. But your pharmacy will send you the bottle with the right speed. So the medicine is in this balloon, which is inside this plastic housing. When you're looking at the bottle, you want to make sure that the solution is clear, that there's no fluid leaking either inside the bottle or on the outside. You want to make sure that there's the cap on the end of the tubing, and then there's also a slide clamp on the tubing, and then this little cap on the very top of the bottle. And this is a clamp when you undo it, this is the clamp that you open so that the fluid can flow, or you pinch it shut so that the fluid stops flowing. Now when you open the clamp and you take the cap off, you can see the fluid starts to flow right away, so I'm just going to close it up so it'll stop dripping. And what's happening is there is a, a fluid regulator inside this tube that sets the rate. So on the bottle it says, for instance, this one's going to run at a speed of 200 mils an hour. So as when you take the cap off, that balloon will start to shrink. And as it's shrinking, the balloon deflates and it's pushing the fluid up out of the, through the tubing, out the end of the tubing and into your vascular access device. At the end of the tubing is a cap. We take the cap off and then I'm going to show you how to connect it to the IV. And then that fluid will start to flow and it flows directly into the IV extension set, into the tubing that goes into the vein and then it flows into his bloodstream so that he can get the medicine. When the medicine is finished you're going to simply take this tubing off of the bottle and the beauty of this little pump is that you can give yourself your medicine while you're at home or once you get used to it, you can even have it running while you're at work or at school and you don't have to wait for your nurse to do this. Keeping it clean. Scott's going to show you how he would hook this up and it's going to be one of the most important things that you can do throughout all of this is make sure that you keep everything clean and free from germs. If germs get into your supplies or into your the syringes and get into your bloodstream, you can get very sick. But if you follow these steps, you do it safely and cleanly, you can do your IV, IV medicine safely and stay healthy, as many patients around the world are doing. You must always wash your hands before you touch your IV or supplies. You can use soap and water or hand disinfectant if your hands are clean. Scott's using soap and water. He's scrubbing the five areas on his hands, the top, the palms, the thumbs, the fingertips, and his wrists. He's turning the tap off with his elbow so he doesn't touch the dirty tap with his clean hands. 
Now make sure you use a clean towel or paper towel to dry your hands and turn the taps off. Now you need to keep your hands clean, so don't touch your face or anything else other than your supplies. You don't have to use gloves because you're working with clean hands, unless your nurse told you to. You need to work in a clean, quiet area, with plenty of room to work, so no dishes or books lying in the area. There should be no pets or children around, and no one should talk to you while you're doing your procedure or cough over the supplies you're working with. Kitchens and bathrooms are not good work areas because of the germs in these areas. You can either wash it with soap and water and a clean cloth or a disinfectant wipe as Scott is doing here. Or you could use a clean paper towel for your work surface, especially if you can't clean the area. Once you've cleaned your table, you need to wash your hands. You need to wash the palms of your hands, the tops of your hands, in between your fingers, your thumbs, your fingertips, and your wrist areas. If you're using hand sanitizer, keep cleaning, scrubbing until the, your hands are dry. You need to know that there are a few areas that you cannot touch or you may allow germs to get into your bloodstream. I call them the three no-touch zones. Number one, never touch this open tip of the flush. This is a no-touch zone. Never touch the cap on the end of your IV once you've cleaned it. It is a no-touch zone once it's cleaned. The only thing that can touch these no-touch zones are other no-touch zones. The third no-touch zone is this open end of the bottle tubing. It is a no-touch zone. Another way to keep things clean is if you need to cough when you're handling your IV and supplies, turn your head to the side and cough into your arm. This keeps germs away from your IV and supplies. If you have a cough and you have a mask, you can put your mask on to keep your germs away from the area that you're working on. Now let's review some of the key points to keeping your line clean. How can you keep the germs out of your line? Would you wash your hands, scrub the hub, and do not touch no touch zones? If you said all of the above, you got it. These are the ways we can keep germs out of your line. Part two, hooking up your intermate. You need to take the pump out of the fridge three to five hours before it's time for the medicine, or however long your nurse told you. You can gather your supplies in a clean plastic container. This can become your work area to keep everything clean. So bring the clean plastic container to the fridge and put your intermate in it and bring it over to the table. You need to, of course, wash your hands as we described earlier so that there's no dirt on their hands. You need to get your supplies ready. So you need your intermate pump. This medicine bottle is now warmed to room temperature. You need three flushes of salty water and you need four alcohol swabs or if your nurse told you to use a chlorhexidine swabs, you can use those. If you have hand sanitizer, have it ready. It's handy to have a watch to, to time things. Look at the label on your pump. Is it your name? Is it the right drug that you're supposed to get? Is it within the expiry date? Now look at the balloon. Is the fluid clear? Make sure there's nothing floating in the balloon and that there's no liquid sitting in the bottom of the bottle. You need to make sure that there, you have your slide clamp on your tubing and the cap is on the tubing. If you said no to any of these when you were looking at your bottle, you would not use it. You need to pull another one from the fridge, but you'd have to call your nurse so that they can order an earlier delivery because you'll be short one intermate. You can set the bottle aside. So open your swabs. We'd rather not have the, the alcohol swab touching the table. So you can see that Scott has kind of propped it up by bending it over. What you could do before you open your swabs though is first have a look at your IV to make sure it's okay to use. Have a look at it and see, is it red or sore? Is there any fluid under the bandage? Is your arm swollen? Check to make sure that the bandage is sticking well and it's clean. Now you need to touch your arm just above where the IV is to make sure it doesn't feel hard or sore. If it's not, that's wonderful, you can continue on. 
You need to slide the clamp that's on your extension set open, if it wasn't already open. Now you need to open the wrapper of the flush and you need to remove any air in the flush. So loosen the cap, just twist it a little counterclockwise, just one turn, but leave the cap on and hold it upwards. Now there's a little air bubble in there, so he's tapping it on a container just to loosen the air bubble. You can also flick your finger to move the air bubble off the wall of the flush. Now you can pull the plunger down just a little bit and then push the plunger up so that pushes any air out of the flush until you see just a few drops come out of the top of the flush. Now you need to scrub the hub. So pick up the alcohol wipe and hold the cap in one hand and then scrub the end of the cap and the sides of the cap firmly for 15 seconds. Now you must wait for 15 seconds to let the alcohol dry and kill any germs. Now that it's cleaned, it is a no-touch zone. You have to make sure nothing touches this clean cap, and if it did, you would get another wipe and clean it again. So now you need to flush your IV. So take the cap off the flush, and the tip now becomes a no-touch zone. So you can't touch it with your fingers, or it can't touch the table or your arm. And of course, that clean cap is no-touch. So the only thing that can touch no-touch zones are another no-touch zone. So now you're going to push and twist the flush onto your cap and you need to flush your IV. You want to see how easy it is to flush. So you're going to push up on the plunger and stop, push, stop, push, stop, push, stop. Take note of how easy it is to flush, and if it ever gets hard to flush, you'll have to let your nurse know. So now you can twist off the flush and discard that flush. Unroll the tubing on the top of the pump. The clamp is pinching the tubing closed so the fluid can't flow. So you need to open that clamp. Just slide the clamp forward to open it. Now loosen the cap by turning it just a little bit. You don't want to take it off. And the fluid will start to drip. When it drips, turn the cap, just slightly tighten the cap. Don't make it too tight. Close that clamp by pushing the clamp forward so that it pinches the tubing. You can set the tubing aside in your container. Now you need to clean your cap again. So get another swab, scrub the top and the sides, for 15 seconds. You can sing happy birthday to me twice or count one and two and three up to 15 or look at your watch or you can even set your timer on your phone. He's kind of scrubbing like he's juicing an orange. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Let the alcohol dry. This is a no touch zone now that it is cleaned. So nothing can touch it but another no touch zone. Take the cap off the tubing. Now that open tip of the tubing becomes a no-touch zone too. And you need to attach the two together. You're going to push and twist the end of the tubing onto your IV cap. Push the slide clamp forward so that it's open and the fluid can start to flow. The fluid will automatically start flowing. Now to make sure it runs at the right speed, you need to keep the pump at about the height of your IV site, so around the height of your chest. You also need to keep the bottle out of extreme temperatures, so out of heat or out of the cold. If it's the winter, you would carry it inside your clothing if you had to go outside. And you would also, if it's warm out, keep it out of the sun. And you want to make sure that the tubing doesn't get kinked or folded over or that you're lying on it or sitting on it because that can stop or slow down the speed. Now let's review a few of the key points that you need to remember. What helps the pump run at the right speed? Would you take the pump out of the fridge three to five hours? Would you keep the pump at around the height of your arm? And do you need to check that the IV flushes easily before you hook up? and that all the clamps are open and there's no kinks. If you said all of the above 
and you do these three things that will help you to make sure that your medicine runs at the right speed. Part three, taking off or unhooking the pump. When you started your medicine, the balloon was full. You can see here that it's half full now because that balloon is getting smaller. And here's what it will look like when your intermate is empty, when the medicine has all gone through your IV. When the balloon is flat, it's time to take the pump off your IV. So you need to again wash your hands as you were shown. Remember, keep it clean. You need to slide that clamp closed so that it is pinching the tubing and stops any fluid from flowing. Now hold your IV cap in one hand and the end of the tubing in the other. Now twist that tubing off and set the pump aside. Now you need to rinse the medicine out of your IV. So open the alcohol swabs. We're going to be flushing with two flushes, so we need two swabs. Open the wrapper of your flush. Remember, you need to get that air out. So he's tapping it in case there's any air bubbles. You need to loosen the cap. You can pull the plunger down just a little bit, but then push it up, up just until you see some liquid coming out of the top. And then get your second flush ready if you were shown to use two flushes. So turn your syringe upright, loosen the cap, pull the plunger down just a tiny bit, and then push the plunger up to push any air out until you see fluid dripping at the top. Stop when you see that there's no more air bubbles in the syringe. Now, of course, you have to scrub the hub before you attach your flush. So scrub the top and the sides of the IV cap for 15 seconds. And now let it dry for 15 seconds. Remember, this is a no-touch zone. Nothing can touch the clean end but the tip of the flush. Take the cap off the flush and push and twist the flush onto the IV cap. Now you're going to push up on the plunger, push, stop, push, stop, push, stop, until the flush is empty. Now twist off the flush, making sure the cap stays on the end of the tubing. In our area, we use two flushes, so you need to scrub again. So take your alcohol or chlorhexidine swab and scrub the end and the sides for 15 seconds with a good scrub. And then, of course, you have to let the alcohol kill any germs, so let it dry for 15 seconds. You're ready to attach your flush, so push, push it on, and then twist it onto the cap. And now you're ready to push on the plunger. Push, stop, push, stop, push, stop, push, stop. Twist off and your IV is now clean. If you were told that you need to finish off by putting some heparin, which is a blood thinner, into your line, you need to scrub the hub again with alcohol and then twist on the heparin syringe and push the plunger until the right amount of heparin has gone in. You will only use heparin, though, if you were told that you have to. Not everybody needs heparin. If there was a clamp on your IV, you would pinch that clamp closed. We don't have one on this IV. Now you need to protect your IV. So you can see Scott is wrapping it up in this stocking. What some people do is they pull the stocking down a little and fold it over. And then if you have a long extension set, you can loosely wrap it around your arm, but you have to be very careful that it is not tight or it can cause damage. So just if you're doing that, just wrap it around really loosely. So he's covering up that extension set and then he's just going to fold it down to cover everything up and he's going to pull it up so that it covers his IV bandage. Now you need to, of course, throw out the supplies, including the bottle, as your nurse showed you, and you need to wash your hands. Congratulations! You did it! It will get easier each time that you do it. Now a few key points to remember. When do you flush the IV? Do you flush it before you hook up, 
with one flush? Will you flush after you take the intermate off when it's empty? If you said both, then yep, you're right. Now let's move to part four. Is there a problem? If your balloon doesn't empty at the time that it was supposed to, and it's running slow, there are a few things that you can look at to see if it caused it to run slow. Was the pump too low? Remember, that pump needs to be around the height of your arm, around the height of your pick. So if you set it down on the floor, it's going to run slowly. Secondly, if the pump or the medicine inside the pump is cold, it will run slowly. So remember to take it out of the fridge three to five hours before it's time to hook up. If you happen to forget, that's okay, but you're just gonna have to then wait at least a half an hour until you start your medicine. Another thing that might make your pump run slow is if the tubing or the IV is blocked. So you wanna make sure that those clamps are open on the tubing, on your pick, if you have clamps there, you want to make sure there's no kinks in the tubing or that you're not sitting on the tubing or lying on it. And make sure you flush the IV before you hooked up to make sure that it was easy to flush. Now, what about if the balloon emptied too soon so the pump ran faster? Maybe it was placed too high above the arm so it ran faster. Or was the pump sitting in the sun exposed to heat? that can cause it to run faster as well. If your arm is sore or reddened or there's some swelling, if you develop a fever or it's hard to flush or if your pump isn't working, then you need to call your nurse. But you may need to go to the hospital if you have a lot of vomiting or severe diarrhea because of the antibiotics or if it's hard to breathe or if you get chest pain. Now let's look back at some of the key points you need to remember. You need to take the Intermate out of the fridge three to five hours before you hook up. Remember, you must always wash your hands before you touch your Intermate or any of your supplies. Always need to scrub the hub before you hook up or attach your flush. Then you need to flush your IV to make sure that your IV is working well. So check to see how easy it is to flush. Then you're gonna hook up your pump and remember, once it's hooked up, you need to keep it at about the height of your arm so that it runs at the right speed. When the balloon is empty, you can take the pump off. Then you need to scrub the hub with an alcohol swab for 15 seconds and let it dry for 15 seconds. And then flush your IV to make sure you flush all of the medicine into your body. And this concludes our video. Medical pharmacies and OMS are committed to our patients' health and well-being. We wish you all the best in your recovery.